Come to the most fun of all the methods, miscellaneous substitution. This is one that I can give you no hard fast rules for because every one is different. This takes practice and you could think you have a good substitution and go down and end up can't find a solution whereas you pick something else you find a solution and one substitution might be easier than the other but again I, I, I can't give you a hard fast rule for this one so let's look at a couple of examples picked out this one y prime equals y plus x times y plus 1 quantity squared plus 1 now how do I decide what the substitution is going to be? Well, I look at this one and I think, hey, I see a y plus 1 here. And then if I take this y plus 1, I see another y plus 1. So why don't we let u equal y plus 1? If u equals y plus 1, then du dx equals dy dx plus zero, the derivative of a constant is zero. So why don't we use this? So what do we end up with? We end up with u prime, then this y plus one is a u plus x times u squared. Now I look at that, uh, I need to move it around some more. I need to change it. So. What do I get? I get u prime minus u equals x times u squared. Now I have it in the form, the form of Bernoulli's. So w equal to u to the 1 minus, here's the n, n is 2. So w equals u to the negative 1. So in other words, we've done this before u equals 1 over w, so du dx, using the chain rule, is equal to negative 1 over w squared dw dx. So this problem, now I take this differential equation here, use this substitution, so I'm going to get negative 1 over w squared dw dx, that's the u prime, minus u, u is 1 over w, equals x over w squared. Then cross multiply everything by a negative w squared, and let's go ahead and do dx. Um, well, let's, uh, we'll wait on the dx actually, let's wait on the dx. And so we get dw, dx minus, so that'd be a plus w equals the w squared cancel out negative x. Now I was ahead of myself on the dx because what is this now? Now it's linear. So we have integrating factor mu equals e to the integral of 1, so that's x. So multiply all this times e to the x dx. Now what do I get? This is linear, so I know this side will be the total differential of the unknown function, which is w times the integrating factor e to the x. What do I get on the other side? I get negative x e to the x dx. So I'm going to integrate both sides. Well, look at this. I've got integration by parts. Okay, so let's let, and I'll call it, um, uh, let's call it V equals uh, X, and I'll, I'll come up with some other, let's call it Z, DZ. I don't want to use U because I already used U, so DZ equals E to the X DX, so DV equals DX and z equals e to the x. So what do I get? The integral of dx is x, the integral of du is u, the integral of dz is z, the integral of dw e to the x is w e to the x. 
over here, now don't forget my negative there, so this would be negative x e to the x um, minus a minus makes a plus integral of e to the x dx, so that would be e to the x plus c. So w equals minus x plus 1 plus c times e to the minus x, because I multiplied everything times e to the x here. Okay, so that's w. Well, what is w? w is 1 over u from up here. So 1 over u is negative x plus 1 plus c times e to the minus x. Okay, so therefore u is equal to 1 minus x plus c times e to the minus x to the negative 1. Okay, I've got that. Now let's go back. u is equal to y plus 1. Right? So y equals u minus 1. So therefore, my solution is y equal to this. That's an x plus c times e to the minus x to the negative 1 minus, because I'm solving for y here, take the negative 1. So there is my solution right here. So miscellaneous substitution, I ended up using several different methods. Now let's do another one here. y prime minus x y double prime minus y double prime cubed. I look at this and I can see hey, I've got derivatives. There's not a, except for this one, there's not a single one without a derivative. So why don't we let u equal y prime. So u prime is equal to y double prime. Okay, so let's make this substitution right here. So I have u minus x u prime minus u prime cubed equal to 1. And I take a look at that and I think, what in the world is that? But what I can do is I can solve for u and I get x u prime plus 1 plus u prime cubed. Now I take a look at it. Hey, this is chlorose. This is chlorose. So I know a family of solutions. Well, family solution would be u equals c times x plus 1 plus c cubed. Okay, that's u, but u is y prime. So let's place it in there. y prime equals cx plus 1 plus c cubed. Let's integrate. So y equals c over 2x squared plus x, right, plus, in fact, I'll just factor that x out, right? But don't forget, I've got another arbitrary constant, and I'll call it c sub 2, if that's okay. So now, what do I have? I have a family of solutions, okay? But what else do I remember about chlorose? I remember that there's a singular solution, possibly, if these parametrics work out. And I've gone ahead and written the parametrics right here for Clairaut's singular solution. Well, what is f of t in this case? Well, f of t is right there. So that would be 1 plus t cubed. So for the singular solution, I get x equals negative f prime, so this would be what? This would be negative 3t squared, because the derivative of 1 is 0. Let's look at, instead of y, in this case I'm dealing with u's, so this would be u equals 1 plus t cubed minus t times that 3t squared. 
So I get 1 plus t cubed minus 3t cubed, which equals 1 minus 2t cubed. Okay? So now I have minus 3t squared, and I have 1 minus 2t cubed. So let's see if we can put these together. So it doesn't matter which one, but this one's easier. So let's use x over negative 3 equals t squared. So take the square root. Now remember, in this case, x obviously is going to have to be negative because you can't take the square root unless it's negative. So I've got u equal to 1 minus 2 times x over negative 3, the square root, but it was cubed, so this becomes a 3 halves. So I just took the square root here, that's where I get the half, but again the t was cubed. So again I've got this, but u is y prime, right? Right here, u is y prime, so y prime equals 1 minus 2 times x over a negative 3 to the 3 halves. I just integrate to solve for y, so this the integral of y prime would be y, the integral of 1 would be x, minus 2 times the integral here, so I need a negative 3 in the denominator, so that would be a negative 3 on the outside, 3 halves plus 1, so that'd be 5 halves, invert it, so that'd be 2 fifths, and then times x over negative 3 to the 5 halves. So what do I get? I get y equal to x, a negative, a negative makes a positive, so this would be plus 12 fifths x over negative 3 to the 5 halves. Now, you can just do that integral out farther if you didn't understand what I did here. Just integrate it. It's normal integration. So what is this again? This is a singular solution. So this would be my singular solution. This right here is my family of solutions. So again, substitution, miscellaneous substitution is probably one of the hardest of all the methods. Because um, sometimes you can pick a substitution and it leads you down the wrong route and you won't know it till you're deep in all these integrals that you can't do. So it is a tough one, but by practice you can sort of get an idea of what the substitution should be. Now I will say this, on problems like this where you have only the derivatives, then make u equal to y prime. That seems to be a, at least some sort of a rule there that you could follow. But again, there are really no hard fast rules for miscellaneous substitution. That's what makes this method probably of all the methods we learned this semester, probably the hardest one of all.